For those of you who have been watching my videos for probably several years, it probably is not going to be a surprise to you, but you remember I used to promote this book, Confusion in the Cosmos, Decoding the Deception by Miguel Stefano. This is probably one of the best books I've ever recommended or read myself. But guess what? I've got some big news for you because I just got this in the mail. Just got this from my friend, Miguel Stefano. And no, Miguel doesn't pay me to promote this. I'm such a big fan of his writing. He's got his latest work and it's right now available for pre-order on Amazon. Get it now on Amazon. So as soon as they start shipping, you're going to get your copy. It's called Confusion in Christianity, Decoding the Doctrines. And from what I've read already, it's going to blow your mind. Destroying all the false teaching and the false doctrines that have been so prevalent in the Church of Jesus Christ all these years. This book is going to really open your eyes to things that you never understood before. 566 pages of solid, great reading and education for you. I highly recommend it, especially if you're a new believer, if you've just come to Christ. This is the kind of book you need because this book will open your eyes to things and it'll keep you from believing false teachings and false doctrines. I recommend it now. It's available for pre-order on Amazon. Hi, Steve here. We just visited relatives over the holidays, and of course I got into a conversation, much to the dismay of my wife, with a dear Christian lady who I love, but who is believing the teaching of the pre-tribulation rapture. Because of the teaching of Les Feldick and an otherwise solid Bible teacher, she's convinced that catching away will happen any day, regardless of what the scripture says in the context they were written in. I know the world is scary and upsetting, and even discouraging for those of us who love Yeshua the Messiah, but it's not an excuse to hang on to a false teaching or any lie that might give us a deceptive hope. Because, like the Bible says, no lie is of the truth. People in the world don't see any problem with telling lies. They call them white lies because they believe they're less harmful than the big ones. But the Bible doesn't make that distinction. According to the Bible, truth and lies are like dark and light in contrast. No lie is of the truth, John said. That's why this teaching of a pre-tribulation rapture is so dangerous. And I understand why people resist believing the Bible the way it's written because it's not all roses, candy canes, and sunshine. Think about what happened these past two years as people believed a lie and paid for it, many with their own lives. If you believe that a pre-tribulation rapture is what's been taught in the Bible, and what will happen to your faith when it doesn't happen, the way you falsely learned what you thought was the truth. I'm going to go over all the scriptures that have ever been used and taken out of context to convince you of a pre-tribulation rapture and show you what Paul really said. But first I want to go to Matthew chapter 13 because what Jesus said here is the reality of where we are and what's coming in the end of the age. Now, before you turn this video off and say, he's crazy, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I want you to understand that there is a catching away. And I'll talk about it in 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, and 1 Corinthians. But let's get into what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13. He presented another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while people were sleeping, his enemy came sowed weeds among the wheat and left. When the plants sprouted and produced grain, then the weeds also appeared. The landowner's servants came to him and said, Master, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? He said, an enemy did this. So do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he said. When you pull up the weeds, you might also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At harvest time, I'll tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and tie them in the bundles to burn them, but collect the wheat in my barn. Now let me explain why this parable is so important. Jesus gave them two more parables right after this one, but when they were all alone in the house, the disciples asked Jesus to explain this one. Then he left the crowds, it says, 
His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He replied, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed, these are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Therefore, just as the weeds are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will gather from His kingdom all who cause sin and those guilty of lawlessness. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Let anyone who has ears listen. When Jesus says the end of the age, He means when everything is consummated. This is not the same as the day of the Lord or the day of Christ that the Apostle Paul talks about in 2 Thessalonians. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him. What Jesus said here in Matthew chapter 24 is an exact match to Revelation chapter 6. And it's the beginning of the end for this world. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. A man on the housetop must not come down to get things out of his house, and a man on the field must not go back to get his coat. Woe to the pregnant women and nursing mothers in those days. Pray that your escape may not be in winter or on a Sabbath, for at that time there will be a great distress, the kind that hasn't taken place from the beginning of the world until now and never will again. Unless those days were cut short, no one would be saved. But those days will be cut short because of the elect. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. Now look at Revelation chapter 14. Then I looked and there was a white cloud and one like the Son of Man was seated on the cloud with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Another angel came out of the temple crying out in a loud voice to the one who was seated on the cloud Use your sickle and reap for the time, the hour to reap is come, since the harvest of the earth is ripe. So the one seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. This is the only place in the Bible that matches exactly what Jesus and the Apostle Paul taught about his return to take the church, both those who were already dead and those who are alive and remain when that hour and that day are fulfilled. Remember, it was God the Father who gave this revelation to us. Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour, but my Father only. But now in the revelation through our Lord's angel to John, he's giving us a better idea of when that day and hour will take place. Okay, like I said, let's cover every scripture that Paul wrote concerning the catching away of the church and the timing of when it will happen. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are still alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Listen. I'm telling you a mystery. We will not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. For this corruptible body must be clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal body must be clothed with immortality. And then finally, the Apostle Paul says this, now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to be easily upset or troubled 
either by a prophecy or by a message or by a letter, supposedly from us, alleging that the day of the Lord has come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness or man of sin is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he sits in God's temple, proclaiming that he himself is God. Don't you remember that when I was still with you, I used to tell you about this? Second Thessalonians was written because of the fact that there were false teachers going around saying that the day of the Lord had already come, which was a lie. Paul clearly explained that the day of the Lord could not come until first there was the apostasy and the man of sin or lawlessness was revealed. And then in Revelation chapter 6, it's very clear that there are many things that are still to happen right up until the end of chapter 6 when we read this. Then I saw him open the sixth seal. A violent earthquake occurred. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of hair. The entire moon became like blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth like a fig tree drops its unripe figs when shaken by a high wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the nobles, the generals, the rich, the powerful, and every slave and free person hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb, because the great day of their wrath has come. And who is able to stand? For those of us who are still alive and remain and have not yet been martyred, we will be required to be faithful even on to death before the day of the Lord. And if you want proof, read Revelation chapter 14, verses 12 and 13. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to ask Christ to be the Lord of your life, to be the Savior of your life, and to come into your heart and have a personal relationship with Him. You can do that very easily. I leave a link in the description box below that you can go down to and you can click on the link. It'll take you to a page with a very simple and sincere prayer. And if you mean it in your heart, you will be born again. You will be saved and you will be able to start in a relationship with the living God, that same God who hung on a cross for you over 2,000 years ago. He will change your life as you allow him to, as you allow him to come and live inside you by his spirit. You'll never be the same and you'll be in a position to spend eternity with him if that's what you want. I know it's what I want. It's the choice I've made and I've never regretted it one time. Before I end this video, I also want to mention that I appreciate my donors, every single one of you. So I just want to give the most sincere thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We love you, every one of you, all of our donors. We appreciate you so very much. And I can tell you this, I give a link in the description box below where if you'd like to help us and support us, if you'd like to support truth, and that's really all it is. If you love truth and you'd like to support truth, I want you to join us. I don't want you to support us if you have hardships in your family, if you're financially bound in any way and are unable at this time, I am not asking you to support us. Take care of your families, take care of your children. But if you can, if you're in a position to support us, we would really appreciate you joining with the few other donors that we have, and I thank you for it. But to all my donors, once again, we appreciate you so much. Thank you for everything you do. And God bless you.